Hello ladies and gentlemen, M Modest here again. So today we're going to go ahead and talk about Photo Edge. Uh, just to let you know, uh, the model I've been building right now, the, the German tank, the AVLB, the Armored Vehicle Landing Bridge, uh, does have its own Photo Edge set that I've been mentioning, uh, that i kind of been putting together. And we're going to go ahead and do that today. There are some photo edge parts that do belong on the upper hull, uh, besides the screens, the air filters, uh, the fans, excuse me, that actually belong on this tank. And besides that, I'm going to go ahead and talk to you about how to put on photo edge without going crazy. Photo edge is a really great uh, detail set of fine metal pieces, as you can see with this Edwards uh, Photo Edge for the Leopard 2 A5. But there are many others, uh, many, many others. There are some for ships. There are some for aircraft. There's uh, ones for tanks, obviously, cars. There's a whole plethora and many, many different brands. It's, it's, it's quite something to actually see what's online to actually purchase. But I do want to point out that when you do photo edge, uh, you want to have certain tools. Some of the tools that I use personally to start off with is a set of shears. Now these are my photo edge shears from Xeron. Uh, it's a good set. I've had these this set for several years actually. Um, probably need to get myself a, a new set. The, the blades get into the tend to get dull. Uh, or some people actually use a hobby knife, uh, a very sharpened number 11 blade. You can use either or to do your photo etch. I've actually used the knife a few times. I've been more reliant on using my shears than anything, but I have been able to use uh, a knife in some processes. The other thing you want to get as well is a hardened surface. Now I have here before me this photo etch bending machine. It's actually just um, a, a spring-loaded device that allows you to, it just snaps on there, it allows you to put your photo etch in and bend it to certain angles. And I'll show you how to do uh, curves uh, a little while. You are allowed to actually do uh, longer pieces, like rails that I have for my ships, or even really small pieces, sometimes that you would use for your aircraft, or for your tanks, or for your men, or whatever the case may be. But the thing you do need is a hard surface to put your photo etch in, clamp it down, and actually use your knife to bend that photo etch, which we'll demonstrate a little bit uh, today. So this thing is from a um, small shop hobby. Okay, You can get that there. Uh, there's other brands as well, uh, maybe cheaper ones. But I've had this thing for a very, very long time, probably as long as I've been building. The other thing you also need is uh, some sort of adhesive. Now, this adhesive here is what you use for your plastic models. This is a testers liquid cement, and it says right up there, for plastic. It is not intended for photo etch, for metal. You will never be able to glue your metal stuff down using this. So instead of that, uh, using crazy glue. Uh, this is what I use generally. I have bottles upon bottles of the of the small pin stuff and it's basically this adhesive that you pull out and just apply but you don't want to apply it directly onto your kit instead the other tools that you need as well besides um, the shears the hobby knife 
and the bending machine. You're also going to need something to pull your crazy glue. Now, I have here a Pringles lid. This is just a Pringles lid, you know, those saddle looking uh, potato chips. This is just a Pringles lid. I have several of these because I like Pringles, but I have several of these uh, that I use for uh, dabbing my glue. You're also going to need um, a simple toothpick. There are applicators that pick up crazy glue. I never use them. This is much, much cheaper. You can purchase those photo etch applicators if you want. Or if you have, for example, let me see if I can get this here. Sorry about that for stretching. Uh, some stretch sprue uh, that you can cut. Once you stretch it, you cut it, and you get that really thin line. Kind of like, uh, let's see if I can reach it. Nah, she doesn't want to get that guy. She got away from me. Uh, that I have in my toolbox out there. And use that as an applicator. Uh, but I like using the simplistic, uh, simplicity of a toothpick. The only thing you want to do is that you want to sharpen it a little bit, just a tad bit. It doesn't need to be pointy pointy, but you also want to make sure that at the end of the day, once you've used, let me see if I can zoom up on there. Once you used enough of the glue, it does get to accumulate onto the tip. So every once in a while, you do have to scrape off the excess. Okay, and usually I do that at the beginning of the day, just before I get started. So, whoops, no way. So there you go with different ways of getting tools for attaching photo etch. But I do want to tell you that sometimes models, but I do want to tell you that sometimes models come with photo etch materials uh, inside the kit. But more often than not, if that happens, the price of the kit goes way, way up, uh, which is a real big downer. Sometimes the photo etch comes separately, uh, like I already mentioned with the Edwards set. That comes separately from the kit. Okay, You're not going to find a specific photo etch set for every single tank, car, plane. Uh, there could be, but more often than not, uh, you, you may or may not find them, in which case you have to modify it. In this case, I have to modify this photo etch set for my purposes uh, that I need it for. I've already used uh, a couple of them from a previous video. These guys' tail lights here. We're gonna go ahead and get started on these guys to place onto the tank. So without further ado, let's get started. So let's get started with your photo etch here. I'm gonna go ahead and cut off the screens and I'm assuming the support structure for the fan coils. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and just cut all the way around. Don't cut it right at the edge. Uh, you may or may not be able to do that properly. So I always like to uh, I'll try to show it to you real quickly if I can like to come by and go around the edge a bit. Now, I'm sure we could see some of the stingers that I have on there. It's better to do it that way. So that way when you do get your shears, uh, you can actually just trim right nearby it. And so as you can see, as I'm working with my Mark One eyeball. Snip. so on and so forth. Please be careful while dealing with this. Uh, don't be around kids, uh, pets, uh, especially those two. Uh, you'll get these little barbs, these little metal barbs there. So always have, like for example, for me, I have my, my trash bin here and I just 
throw those guys away. Check the shears. Make sure they don't have any barbs. And be very careful. Don't go rubbing it too hard because you might stab yourself and it could get embedded into your skin, which is going to hurt a little bit. Okay, a little bit. So be very careful while trimming that around. Uh, now, another thing that you might want to use, which I haven't mentioned yet, is um, a primer. I haven't used primer on Photo Etch except for a very few occasions, uh, which I'll post on to this video. But something as, as narrow as this fret, as close in diameter, I mean, you could see through my hand, but uh, if you apply a primer and a paint job on there, you might defeat the idea of having that mesh. So using a primer, it's totally up to you. If you have a large piece of metal, I would probably use it. If it's a piece of metal that will not bend or be bent, I would use it. Uh, and I'll show you what primer that I use as well. Other than that, I normally don't use a primer for those things. So let me go ahead and finish this off and I'll be right back. So this is the screen, the mesh screen that I just removed, the rest of the barbs that you can see on my middle finger here. Uh, I have three of those little barbs. I lost the other one. It probably fell on the ground. Uh, or it looks like it's right there on my table. Yep, there it is. Okay. And again, get those barbs. Toss them right away. You don't want to get yourself barefooted on your carpet. Um, as you probably heard from my other video, I have a hardwood floor underneath here. So it really helps me in um, picking up parts that fall down. Uh, you're going to have a tendency of uh, parts flying off. You're going to have a tendency of your fiddling around with pieces of them oh, losing them okay, on the ground. And if that happens, if you lose them on the ground, then uh, you have to search for them. As I already mentioned in a few other videos uh, already. Let me zoom myself back. Oh, wrong way. I can remember which way I need to go. So these guys are oops, these guys are set. Now the other tool that you may or may not want to purchase. Number one, you should have plenty of light. Uh, I have my lights right above me. They're just these elbow lights. Um, you could be nearby an open window, but if you're out there at night, you're fiddling around at night. You're coming back from work. You're relaxing in your man cave. And you don't have sufficient light, uh, having these uh, type of lights here, I'll try to show you a picture of them, uh, would be doable. But another tool that would be helpful is um, a magnifier. Now, I have modified this magnifier because it just comes just like this with a piece of foam. Um, sure, granted, it's padded here, but sometimes the padding's not to your comfort level. So I just add a piece of foam. Yeah, sure, it comes off. Yeah, absolutely, it's loose. But you know what? It, it works for me. Whatever works for you is fine. There are tabletop magnifiers uh, that are good as well. And it depends on your price range. So if you want to get that, a desk-mounted uh, magnifier, I had one. Uh, but then eventually I, I just uh, kind of grew it and then went to uh, the Optivisor, the one thing that I just showed you. That's another important tool, especially for those of you who are dealing with smaller parts. And in fact, as I was cutting, removing the barbs, I was actually using uh, an optivisor for me to see how close I could get to the edge of that, that piece there. So let's go ahead and talk about how to mount them. So next thing we'll do, we'll get our lid, our Pringles lid. Open up the crazy glue because you can only use crazy glue for this. Now, how much glue do you need? Do you need to pour it on there? No, don't do that. You just want to apply small bits of crazy glue uh, in the affected areas that you want it. Okay, that should be more than enough than we would need. And then reclose it, put it away because you probably won't need it until a little bit later. You could probably use it a little bit later. The well, first thing we're going to do is that we're going to mount the screen 
onto the support here, okay? And again, just a little bit is all you need. You don't really need a lot. Now, once you put this on, okay, once you put this on, you won't be able to take it off. So make sure that you have it aligned. Make sure that you're careful. Make sure you're wearing your Optivisor if you need it. I'm not wearing it now because I need to get up close to what I'm doing. So you might see my, my head in the way, uh, but I want to make sure that I'm able to put it where I need to put it. So I'm going to just add a little bit of the glue on a few of these spaces here. I'm not going to put it all over. You don't want to make a big giant mess. Because the idea of using Photo Edge is to make great looking detail parts. You want your part, your model to stand out. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get my screen. Using my tweezers, just very carefully, I'm going to just put it right on top. And press down. Now you might need a bit more uh, around. We'll deal with that later if need be. Like I can see right now where it's not gluing down, but that's okay. We'll just add a little bit more. Over here. I'm just putting it on the frames themselves. Uh, like I said, I don't want to put it all over the place. You kind of want to keep it hidden because it will ooze out. Um, and there you go. Okay. And again, with the white background, uh, zoom in on that a little bit. White background there. It comes out quite nice. Oops, don't lose it. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and attach it now onto the tank itself. And crazy glue doesn't take long for it to dry. It, it dries pretty instantly. And more often than not, you'll get, oh my gosh, I got it on my fingers. Okay, don't pull your fingers apart. You might rip off the skin, especially if you have a lot of it. If you accidentally dab your fingers in there, I've done that a couple of times. Uh, be very careful. Even right now, it ju I just felt it stick on to me a little bit. So be very careful while handling the piece that you've done. Now, we're going to go ahead and place it on its side. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and attach it onto fan rim right here. And again, just used a little bit. You don't need a whole lot. Okay, now, next thing you want to do, check out placement. Make sure the placement looks good. The placement looks good here on me. I'm eyeballing it here with my Mark I eyeball. Yikes! You notice I said yikes quite a bit. Uh, I can push it from underneath. Align it. Okay, just carefully go around it. Good thing it's not this filter's not attached. I keep calling it a filter, it's a fan coil here. It's not firmly attached. I didn't mount it, glued it onto the lower chassis of the tank. But once it sets, leave it be. Okay, leave it be. Next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and attach the other one. But more importantly, uh, I was looking at the Edwards site for their instructions. There are these small little handles that are around the tank uh, on the sides on top so we're going to go ahead and do those and i'll show you how to do the smaller ones and remove those hatches that are molded onto the tank and replace them uh with the little handles that are on the on the fret okay now Here's the hard part when you're dealing with small pieces, okay? Normally, what I would do is I have like a, a little bit of a protective barrier uh, right here, but it's going to interfere with the uh, video. I, I won't have enough room even if I pull this thing out. And I have to set it up a bit. Um, 
And the reason why I do that is in case if the pieces were to fly off, uh, which tends to happen with smaller pieces. Normally I would have that barrier in place, but since I have so many of these handles and I really don't need too many of them for the upper hull, I'm just gonna just rely on my uh, Mark One eyeball and my Optivisor actually to make sure that uh, I get these cut out and put up, put uh, put on. Okay, so stand by. I'm gonna come and start cutting cutting off these handles. So what I've done really quickly, I came by and I got my shears underneath, and I start cutting away at a few of these handles. So most people come by and uh, I, I can't get, well, here's an idea, flip it over. Oh, there you go, now I can work on it. Okay, now, the key thing is to hold these pieces down. Okay, don't let them fly off. Because, like again, you don't want these things to be shooting off into orbit. So cut a few, set them aside. All right, so now all those molded handles have been removed. Let's go ahead and attach the handles. We're gonna start from the innermost going out, because if you're going from out to in, you're gonna rub against that fresh uh, crazy glue and the photo edge, more importantly, and more likely than not, you will lose your part. You'll get frustrated, you'll cry, I'll laugh. Okay. But again, uh, these are just techniques that I know through the years and experience of doing dealing with photo etch. So always work from inside out if you have things going back and forth. Now, again, I'm not a master builder. I, 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 it's just a hobby I like doing. But this added detail really helps out. Now, a couple things we could do. We can get those tweezers. Okay, as I mentioned to you, my needle nose tweezers. Carefully pick one up. If you can, if you have to, use your finger, which I did right now. And just be very careful, because even though you're dealing with these tweezers are serrated, they're very pointy, okay? Grip it in such a way that it's not gonna fling off into outer space, okay? Or for that matter, have the glue touch the end, the very end of your tweezers. Okay, and I'm gonna just dip it in there ever so gently and then attach it. And it does take some practice. You're not gonna be a pro right away. It's going to take some time for you to put that on there. Okay, and there's the first one that we just attached. So I'm going to go ahead and stop because my gardener's here. It's making too much noise. But I'll show you the results later. Okay, so just real quick, I've trimmed down a few of them, but I want to show you what I need to do for the others. First of all, the ones that are really easy to grab, like this guy right here. Um, okay, that one is really easy to grab. Okay, uh, I just found out I was using the wrong knife. I was using one of my dull knives to, to do the scribing. But anyways, get yourself a nice sharp hobby knife and just very carefully just trim it off. Just trim it off. Okay, don't come by and go crazy and destroy your your model. It's going to happen. Um, don't sweat it too much. But what about, hey, Mo, how am I going to get that one? Well, here's another thing that I also have. It's a very small exacto chisel. Okay, and as I'm pulling myself in a little bit more, hopefully you'll be able to see it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just carefully, very carefully, just go across slowly. And, and I'm doing this away from the kit. Normally, I'll be like right on top of the kit. Uh, just move it really closely. 
and just ease it in. Hopefully you don't gouge it. Hopefully you're able to see it. Okay, and just carefully remove it that fashion. Okay, so having that little chisel-like device actually helps out. There's another one right here that I haven't been able to... The other ones I was able to actually remove a little bit of it with my uh, shears, with my sprue cutters. Um, but here's another one right over here, a fuel tank, if I'm not mistaken. It's one of the fuel lines that we have here. And do the same thing. Just go in there really careful and just ease it up, ease it up. Okay, again, don't need to go too fast, but give it a nice firm grip and just tease it over, tease it over. Because as you can see, there's another hatch right here, another uh, probably locking pin right there. That might need to be replaced. Well, who knows? Okay, just easily go back and forth. If you want to, you can actually probably come by and remove it. Uh, just chop that piece down and actually, whoops, and actually remove it that way. So that's that's what I would do. Okay, so it can be done. I've done a few of them already over here. Okay, and they're ready to be prepped for the handles. Okay, so I'll show you that in a moment. All right, so what do you do if you need to do circles or curves? Uh, two things you could do uh, while doing curves. One, you could get your piece, which I have right here, very thin photo etch filter rail thing majiggy and uh you can bend it around uh a piece that you need to do uh, one of these two filters so you could do that uh if it's a bit stronger piece in a sense of a bit of a thicker piece uh that needs to be rolled over then what i could do is get my hobby knife remove the blade use this roller and press it down but make sure that your area is nice and clean okay or use a hard surface or use your sheet styrene and place that thing over there and just roll it over several times and eventually it will start to curve and bend um i'll try to show it to you with a piece of a rail but for now with the air filter photo etch that we need to attach. I'm just gonna go ahead and place it around uh, the air filter. It seems pretty thin enough. And again, you want to make sure that you uh, measure it out, dry fit it, and just lay it on there as best you can. Now, the other thing I use for photo etch because you don't want to bend it too much is using I like these um, rubberized ends these tweezers with the rubber at the end those are really handy or you could go online uh, get yourself what pair or you can make your own uh, I made a set of my own it's in another how-to video and just bending that over just like I'm doing right now um, Actually works, wow, that works pretty well. So next thing you want to do is glue one in, trim it down, glue one in, and then just wrap it around, which is what we're going to do right now. So let me just set this aside. Probably going to need some more uh, crazy glue, super glue, to adjust that there. So here we go. We're going to go ahead and attach... The last of the photo etch, at least for the time being, uh, really doesn't matter whereabouts you start, at least on this one, where you start attaching your photo etch. Just make sure that you're careful in measuring, making sure, oops, sorry about that making sure that you have everything all aligned and making sure that you have your you know your your super glue available 
That's always important. I'm just going to go ahead and attach that vertically and then just go around carefully. Ah. Try that again. Zoom in a little bit if I can. And that looks just about right. So one more thing I want to mention, uh, as far as using the PE bending tool. Uh, I, I just have a small rail. This is a 1 700 scale rail, scale rail. Uh, angles, like I guess they can be done using uh, the photo etch bending uh, device. This guy right here. Just add your piece right there, slip it inside, uh, close it down, and then bend. Now, that's just for general things. If you want to be very specific, well, then you need to get yourself a, a ruler. Uh, I use metrics um, when I'm ever measuring my rails. The reason being is because using metrics, uh, the, the divisions between one and two are very accurate. Unlike inches, uh, it's just like, oh my gosh, is that is that one thirty second? Is that to seven, 30 seconds, it just it gets too confusing. So I've always used metrics, being a former science teacher, now hobbyist, uh, using that ruler in metrics is really handy using it in millimeters. But uh, if you're making real precise angles, measure where you need to make that angle uh, bend, and then, then measure it out. And what I usually do is I usually get my tweezers and I just push that piece in to where that's measured, clamp it down, bend it over with my hobby knife. Pre-paint it before bending it. You can easily go over that with a small brush uh, to paint over that one area that you bent. That's not a major catastrophe. But as far as bending it, uh, just to give you a quick demonstration, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this rest of this rail. This was an actual sized rail. So excuse my head. And the thing about rails, which I've done a few times, is actually cutting, you know, splitting hairs is what I call it. It's where you actually get the, the vertical part of uh, the railing system, which is kind of a neat trick I'm being able to do. But as you can see, probably see, I don't know if you can actually see it because it's so damn small. But um, yeah, almost lost it there. Kind of grab a hold of me. I'll bring it up to you. You can see that small rail right there on my index finger, right there where my thumb is pointing to. Um, there's some small barbs. So with the barbs, I like to get it at an angle. Get that zero on PE cutter, cut it at an angle. Just trim a little bit, make it flush. As flush as you can get it without actually damaging the rail itself. And that requires, uh, I have to tell, it requires a bit of skill. It, it's not easy for just a novice to be actually doing it. And again, make sure you get rid of all those little burrs and nibs. And I can still feel it. So in that case, I'm gonna come by and cut it this way. In which case it grabs hold of it. There you go. Actually, I did damage it a little bit, but that's okay. So once again, once you cut it, uh, cut those burrs, and you want to make those burrs uh, as flush to the bottom of the rail as possible, or even at the top of the rail. If anything that happens is that when you 
put your adhesive, your super glue onto the model, onto the rail. Uh, you don't want to go all the way across, just little spots here and there, especially at the corners where the rail is going to bend, where the rail has been bent, and add super glue on there. Add, add a good amount of it because that's going to be one of the weak points. Uh, as you're moving the model around, as you're putting more PE rails across. Uh, and the other thing as well, don't get a big giant rail. If it's longer than, say, um, five centimeters, six centimeters, uh, don't get one that's like 10 centimeters long because that that's, it becomes a big hassle. Uh, you'll get disappointed. You'll be fussing around with it too much. It's easier to cut it into smaller pieces. Uh, and the other thing as well, if you do have to cut it into smaller pieces, cut right at the vertical post uh, where the rails would attach. Cut that vertical post. So you're going to have these three or four or two uh, hanging uh, Irish pennants, is what we sailors call it, of the rail. Uh, just attach the next PE right up against it. Make sure this is flush and then super glue that part down on there. And that should usually hold. That's what I've been doing. I've been pretty successful. Uh, use your ruler. If you're measuring out a generic piece of railing, measure it out. Push it in with your uh, tweezers. Make sure it's opened up. Make sure you open that thing up. And then push it into where you want it. I'm just guessing right now it looks like the vertical spot is right there. It's kind of hard for me to see because it's about like, looks like about two feet away from me. Uh, just I'm going to be able to make sure I'm able to see it. And then once you get it there, clamp it down to make sure it's tight. And then with your sharpest, your sharpest knife, just go ahead, crawl underneath there carefully. Tease it up. Tease it up. And then just bend 90 degrees. I'll be able to see that. Bend 90 degrees. And then unlock it. Get your tweezers. Carefully pull that out. And there's your bend piece. And for multiple bends, um, when that happens, I, I basically use uh, the edge right over here, the edge, and I just open it up again, and then I bend it to however I want. And that's what I do, okay? That's what I do for bending photo edge. If, if there's multiple if there's multiple bends, again, cut it to where it bends. Um, don't cut the whole big, long, 10 centimeter wide uh, uh, piece. And you should be happy about what you're doing with their photo edge and again it requires some skill don't think that you're going to be the professional it took me a few years seriously a few years to get comfortable in using photo edge um i just become so proficient and used it so often um you know call me mighty mo but i'm not mighty mo mighty mo is the uss missouri but i'm pretty good and attaching the photo etch onto models. Anyways, uh, hopefully this helps you uh, in your photo etch experience. Uh, if you have any questions, please ask. That's what I'm here for. Ask me. That's what I'm here for. Um, I'm more than willing to share my knowledge. I, I don't have a Patreon page. I don't care about it. I just want to make sure that you are happy and you are improving on your hobby that you love so much. Anyways, this is M Modest. Happy building. Good luck.